All right. This is a webinar to demonstrate the new California Environmental Data Exchange Network web page and data query tools. My name is Karen Larson with the Office of Information Management and Analysis at the State Water Board and joined by Mark Kringer from the Mothman Marine Lab. I'm demonstrating the website and Mark will be demonstrating the data query tools. Mothman is a network of distributed database nodes also called regional data centers, which I'll talk about more in a little bit. We exchange data to facilitate integration and sharing of data among groups, as well as making data readily available to the public. The reason is that Seed and Wolf serve two main audiences, board staff and the public. Board staff, Seed and will be a source of ambient quality information and eventually assessment tools that could be used for a variety of analyses, including CMDO, low evaluations and calculations, reasonable potential analysis for permit writing, as well as permit derivation, to name a few. Our board staff and the public will be able to make ad hoc queries of the data in season. In addition to serve the public's interest and answer their questions, it's assumed that season will be the primary source of data feeding the Water Quality Monitoring Council's Monitoring Quality Web Portal. If you had a chance to look at the portals, I encourage you to follow this link right here. The port organized by theme. Currently, there are live portals that present information to answer the questions, whether it's safe to swim at California's beaches, whether it's safe to keep fish caught from California waterways, and the status of the health of our wetland ecosystem. So this is the student homepage that provides links to the regional data centers, and I mentioned to the My Water Quality Web Portal. And that's the page that are the season partner logos. We'll link to each of the organizations respective websites. Moving on to the other pages, I want to note that there are two pages that are not live yet. The new and the frequently asked questions. It's grayed out because we do not contain information yet. The new page will be where we announce New data and additional features added to the system. So I'll encourage you to visit the page often to see what's new. We will be establishing a student email subscription that will be used to announce new features as well. We have the questions page will be provided with questions we receive as people using CDN either to submit or access data. All right, so moving on to the address page. This page provides more detailed information about Seedon and how organizations interested in sharing data can participate. It also includes an organizational chart that shows how the regional data centers are organized and how data feed in to each of the data centers. Moving on to the next page, the city data page. This describes the resources available to organizations interested in submitting those data to the future system. Remember, store help desk over here that folks can call to determine which regional data center they should work with. Also links to more information about the regional data center. Look at this page. You click on one of those and it takes you to the regional center page. There are four regional data centers for RDCs that are distributed geographically throughout the state. First is the Moss Landing we have here, in the center, located in the Central Coast. The Mining RDC works with this Water Board Surface Water Ambient Monitoring Program, or SWAMP, as well as data generators in the Central Coast area to have data and submit it into Sweden. Here in California, Coastal Research Project down here in Southern California is located down here in Southern California, and works with grant recipients and regional monitoring programs in California to exchange And up here is the San Francisco Esri Institute, or SFEI. State data collected in the San Francisco Bay. And finally, the Davis RDC manages data collected through the Central Valley, primary data collected under the Central Valley Water Lands Regulatory Program. Right, going back to the submit page, I want to point out that in addition to connecting organizations to 
already received, this page provides data format resources to assist people with formatting their data to submit and to see in. Data set templates, which is here, will for a variety of data types and unloadable in Excel spreadsheet format. With value of this, Twitter diet naming conventions for various measurements and data elements, and they are also available here for download and back up and go to the most exciting part of the web page, which access data. And first I'll use the data catalog. When you click on you're directed to a page and list statewide monitoring projects. Now we have project pages for these. Not all of the data are currently available in CDN yet. We've noted entries under the project name. The wide project page, you can navigate to other projects either using the links in the across the top or on the map to the right. When you hover the map, the general board area is elevated so you can see what region you're in. Um, both the map and the links up at the top are organized by regional board boundaries. So click on a region, you're directed to a page that the projects with data available in that region. So we'll click here on region four. Projects that are available uh, in the Los Angeles region. When you click on a project name, you get to the project page, which includes a description of the project, the objectives, and showing the monitoring location. The project pages also provide contact information over here, a list of the types of data that were collected, and links to available assessment reports and other relevant information. Then going back to the access data page, in addition to the data catalog link, the access data page provides links to the tools for gaining and downloading the data. Currently, the only tool available is the advanced query tool, the link here. However, the public launch um, will eventually have a simple query tool available for users to make basic queries to screen a subset of the data available in CEDEN. And we plan to have a set of assessment tools such as graphing capabilities available as well. The advanced query tool, you click on this link here, and it takes you to this page where you can select from a number of categories to query the CEDEN data. So now in the presentation over to Mark Pranger to demonstrate the functions of the advanced query tool. Um, I'm Mark I work at the Mossman Regional Data Center uh, in California. So today we demonstrate is the um, Vanquery tool. As Karen said, this will be the first tool that seems out with to allow us to download the um, first query the data and find out which data is available to the users, and then once to download the data for you know, other applications being important to an access database, a SQL database, um, or to download it for an Excel for graphing and sorting kind of purposes. The query tool is broken into half. On the left, we have a standard mapping interface that's similar to um, a Google Map Quest type design. As there's um, bars for scrolling to left and right, um, the slider that allows you to do a material map in different parts of the state of California. And there's a box that allows you to highlight a single area of California. And if you want to do map the data and find all the stations that are associated um, with the associated criteria. On the right of the, the, the application, we have the result categories, current water quality, and toxicity categories. We'll soon, um, the next few months, 
be adding category for tissue data, which is already loaded in the season, so we don't have the actual displays set up yet for them, as well as bioassessment data being bugged and um, display type data. So looking back to see where those types of data are available to this application. Down below that's the map stations button, which allows you to once you set your criteria to map all the stations on the to the left. We have um, you can map the counties. This shows the different keys um, within California. This is not an actual sorting characteristic at this time, but it does allow you to group um, or to see what boundaries are for different counties. If you want to obviously hit high counties, the same button. Um, as well as the map Huck, California. So we can map all the uh, Huck eight boundaries. Once again, there's not a certain characteristic at this time. So we're going to develop some GIS layer characteristics that allow for grouping data that are sorted data based on HUCT numbers and different here that are set up by um, a large quality board. We have a show QA as you download your data in your L or database system. The button will show you all the different codes that you associate with your data and their descriptions. In a way, it helps us not to have to um, fill all the downloads with all these combinations of different QA codes as are appropriate to your data set. Um, but it's to show all the stations that are currently loaded into the seeding system. We can show all the different codes, the Latin longs for GIS use, as well as the station name. So these can be down in either an Excel or as a text format. There's a button that goes in and gives um, an overview of how to run this web application, what the different symbols mean, how to use the sliders, um, how to use the box to highlight certain areas of space, um, as well as the select boxes for the um, query that you're going to set. Run your query. The section on the right is all the different criteria we've set up for the six criteria being a program, project, parameter groups, parameters, matrices, and stations. Chosen those it's also possible to sort the data by date range. So if you're proud of her, um, like Marie, and only want a certain date range, or then most up to date data, you can then set the range. And at the bottom of the table, the bottom side is to retrieve data. You can use data both as um, the data, the first thousand rows, or the first thirty thousand rows. Pull down data that's more than thirty thousand rows is the retrieve data button. You will be prompted for an email address, and we will send you a zip file of the data that you've select pulled down. This will help speed up the, the query data, as well as to not bog down the system for other users with data sets are requested. Demo, we're going to start with um, set criteria. So today, we can select the program. We have this, all the programs that are currently in the system. It has said there'll be new programs coming online. The next few months, so please check here or to the news button on the Seed and Web page. If you want to choose the Irrigated Lands Program, and then hit Select that. Like projects by hitting this button are available within the Irrigated Lands Program, and this is the Irrigated Lands Program Region 5 at the current Now, this is the East San Joaquin Water Coalition. Use this term groups. And these groups um, and criteria are constantly being refreshed based on choices you've already made. So this lists the groups that are associated with the East San Joaquin Water Coalition. This is going to choose conventional, systematic groups, and um, sources. These parameter groups are overlapping, so a parameter nutrient that are associated with that will also be in the conventional group. I can show you a quick demo of that. I click on it, then shows me these are current analytes that are associated with the East San Joaquin River Coalition. If I stand on that, I can hit select group again. So nutrients will tell me that it's going to erase my previous selection. And I'm conventional. And I'll show this and analyze the parameters that are associated with the East San Joaquin Wally Coalition. Um, if I choose left, I would choose temperature. At that point, hit select. You can choose um, everything below temperature if you hit the shift key. Or you can choose one of 
the parameter in this case is temperature. And a combination of these two, um, and sit down. So you have to choose different matrices. And because temperature is my choice, um, I get the AR or water temperature, in this case, full water, and I'll use um, sample water. And I can move these stations. And this will show me all the stations with East San Joaquin water quality that are have oxygen or temperature associated with them in the sample water. You see this view, um, there's a lot of a solution of where the sites are. So I can either use the fly bar to slide a little bit and get more, or I can use the on my mouse and just simply roll it forward and then just the map um, to see what you want to see. Buttons um, or flags all represent individual stations. Um, say Latin long, if I go to these stations, or uh, um, flex, a name of the station, a station code, and an option of showing um, different information, additional information. So the station code, um, the Latin long associated with this station, and then the number of parameters that have been sampled at this station, as well as the date range that they've sampled over. So this is example from May 2006 to of 2007. Each individual parameter is the number of counts that are currently loaded into the seeding system. This um, the data query that's generated by the seeding system includes all the data that's in seeding and not just the data that's associated with my current in the seeding system. There are more parts listed here, different oxygen and temperature that I've um, like this point for the rest of the query system. Once I've selected the parameters and the data sets that I want to see, uh, I can then change if I wish between July of 2004 and September of 2007. And then I can load the data and I can the options for downloading my 1050 results would be either at this point I do Excel. Um, so I Excel or a text file, which is a limited text file. If I look the results to a single, to only a thousand records, then the option is to HTML um, view of the data here on the web page. Oh, okay. You could view which fields are being downloaded. Um, and if you have a small data set, you could also look at the single results um, types that you download. So, one way to view the data using this application. Uh, so the option is if you do uh, show all the records in the 1050 and pull it as an Excel file or a text file, retrieve data, you'll be prompted to then save this file to your computer or open it with Excel in this case. That was using the data from more of a top down uh, application. If I start the whole process over, uh, all the criteria are dynamically driven, as I said earlier. So it's possible not to start with a program level, but to start, in this case, with a single uh, parameter group or parameter level. I'm going to choose the demo um, levels and then use um, tone dissolve arsenic. Once again, by hitting the shift key or the control key, allows me to select multiple parameters. I'm just going to map the data to see where we have either um, salt arsenic or tall arsenic within the state of California. So right this time, that's the flag marked in green instead of the result purple. You see that there's actually aggregations of stations or collections of stations to see the process of mapping the data on the page and for multiple users. We show a limited number of flags that can show up on the screen, and then if there's more than that limited number, the data will be aggregated by area. To see what the exact stations are and what the exact station names are, you could simply use scroll bar and find a certain area of the state, or if you're really interested in a certain area of the state, in this case, choosing the Southern California area, I can highlight that using our um, selector box, map the stations, and I'm into 
organization located in Southern California. We all know that on the right, the state's list has been updated to only include those stations. So in this case, it's all stations within a certain geographical area that I define by using a box that either arsenic or arsenic is involved. If I can scroll in a little bit, you know, or using the slider on the left, or by clicking on the map, and you get close up view of stations that are on it. It's now possible to see what the stations are and if I want to find more information on the station. Because now that I've chosen only eight areas in the Southern California, or any stations, sorry, in the Southern California that have arsenic or arsenic, I can find out which ground this has come from. If I chose at this point, I could also then choose to only select data from the Southern California from Water Monitoring Coalition. Then my data, I that these, these group of stations are to with that program, as well as these two analytics. I can see that my record count has dropped to 238. If I need to have um, more available, or if I want to include my QA samples, you'll see that my record count jumps up. Um, I can choose to go back if this is record count too small and I want more information for a certain area or just more accounts for my graphing or storage purposes. I select and unselect this and then I'm saying for the station codes. And unselecting, I've now eliminated that criteria and sorting limiting capability to remap the stations. Is that I have now have all once again all the arsenic and um, arsenic and arsenic dissolved that are um, available in the seeding data system across the state. And at this point, once again, choose a criteria within a certain area and to include a larger area than I did last time for the data associated with all the different programs within Southern California. Instead, last time I chose a single program, which was the Stormline Monitoring Committee. Use the volume. Okay, let me see. This is Mark. Um, I can now leave our uh, um, kind of. Is that better, Janet? Hello. Thank you. You're live, Mark. Okay, thank you. Uh, leave the pre record part of the meeting um, and go to more live version of the demo. So, um, so what you saw, the last thing I was doing was doing the kind of um, selecting of the data, using, um, collecting pre-recorded data using the um, select box that we have developed. We've got questions on this about people who want to look at data by GIS layer, such as the, the, a water body name or a, hawk, um, or a water body name. Um, and we're working on adding that application to the system as I was um, in early recording. But we emphasize that at the current only way to select a certain area of the state would be to use a select box. In this case, I'm just doing San Francisco Bay to highlight the area, and then you could actually map your station. Um, as I showed earlier, and this can be done for any part of the state. In this case, you see that there's of, of, of stations that have been identified, and we do have data for it within the student system. If you want down even farther, I could do something like just the South Bay, um, just by simply mouse forward. Clicking on the map. Right. And then just the South Bay data and mapping um, the data. If I scroll more, you can see the actual locations of the different um, data points within the Bay of San Francisco. Then it's um, very different to select and look at what type of uh, program are working in the South Bay and have submitted their data to season. And this, we have the, the regional monitoring program at SFEI, the Swamp from the Service Water MEMI program, and the West EMAP studies. I'll have it for the South Bay, or for the small geographical area that I've selected in California. Well, we didn't talk about in the earlier presentation, but there's been on the auto mapping function. One function is turned on, it's possible then to 
to um, get a search by a single program to kind of a spatial inventory of the data. So in this case, I'm going to choose to uh, select some daily load program. You know, so currently, the only data we have for the MDL program is in around the Mountain region of the um, Central Valley. It's also possible if you're interested in a single analyte um, to choose or choose a parameter group first and then select a parameter. And this, I'll just choose Alden total. And in the state of California, it currently has data for Alden. And what you could then Either select the uh, use of select box to select data at a certain area of the state and map that data, or you can simply scroll and have different uh, stations as this um, probe with that, um, that sample for algae and then submit the data to see them. Um, it just got uh, the capabilities of the Eden advanced query tool, and we have materials and how to get data out. I also went back um, a little more time talking about how people get data in to kind of follow up with Karen's presentation. If you've been help page, there's a um, submit data tab. As Karen said, there's been, we've got a lot of use out of our help desk, people calling about how to submit data, where to find more information, uh, being helped with the template, as well as who to submit the data to. And so I'll list the regional data centers. Um, as Karen you can click on those and button and take you to a list of the regional data centers that are currently accepting data for citizens. So let's drill down even farther to find out more information about contact information and where they're actually located. We have templates for meeting data to citizens. There is um, currently accepted data for field academic data on to see um, a couple different templates that was taxonomic data. So either like benthic map or a bit of a data or data if you're doing some of the bioassessment work. And below that are all the valid values that are used to populate that data. And it has come up with a list of valid values that originally followed the SWAMP um, nomenclature convention and a standard that we've expected to include um, Storm Monitoring Committee and SFDI and the different RTCs um, and different programs that have, done, who have submitted to season to find um, or your analyte is not on the seed and valid list, please do text a regional data or the help desk, um, which is here. And we can see if your analytes are listed or that there's just a difference in the way we name our analytes. And it's important for us, a system like this, that we all use um, the standard we convention. So when we pull up things like on a map or pull up things in a query that say, right, um, real or it's nitrate at end versus nitrate as NO3, actually comparing apples to apples, only doing regulatory or graphing work. Um, briefly click on one of the templates for chemistry. Have a pop up, you can save this to your desktop. And then the template has examples of the water quality or sediment in the sense for the chemist template. The notes tab. Um, more information about the test and the different fields within the template. You'll see that this, this template follows the swamp synonymy convention and the swamp templates. If your laboratories or people in office are used to data swamp templates, um, this kind of guide the templates, the middle process throughout the state. The fields in the template are very similar to most estimated um, deliverables, and if there's Station groups, date, time, collection of methods, sample type. And as you can see, we've seen a lot of data samples as well as your black UA, your blanks, your CRMs, and compare the data. And the data becomes much more useful by providing extra information for analysis of what if your data set that's being submitted is useful for other uses besides your original purpose. Um, and off to the right, you see standard chemistry templates of the analysis ingestion time, the lab batch, analysis of dates, um, and method metrics. Um, we also do request that you submit your MDLs and RLs, which is really important for undetects or uh, detected values are not quantified. So we can use those for um, a lot of agents for things like PTDs and all that. 
the mix of benefits of tweeting and sniffing in the swamp format is that you now take the um, you've populated that template, but now take it and run it against swamp data checker. Uh, it's the event to select either chemistry uh, with that tissue or toxicity data that you're going to actually be able to submit the seed in. Um, type in your mail. If you're not on the current list, agencies then swamp. Then you can just turn the not recorded feature um, or list. You can just simply browse and upload the file that you want to um, test against the swamp system. The way to using the swamp system is that some of the current um, agencies that are not on swamp or um, or like that are not on the swamp system already are station code that are valid by list. Will, will come up as errors in the swamp data checker. Uh, in, the, in the near future, that swamp, or we have to the just design the swamp system and move that over to the seeding system so we can expand on the value list um, to match the values that are at this list, not just in the swamp system. So look for an um, update for the next um, year. Uh, the value list and uh, are currently from the swamp system, but as we expand and take on more data from other agencies and expand the nations, the number of agencies that its main data seed in, the um, value list will often be updated. And that's it for our presentation. I'll pass it now back to Carl for any final comments. And we'll be happy to take um, your questions on the way or on the seed in event. Very cool. I wanted to go over some of our current activities that um, this group may be interested in. Uh, some of the activities that we're undertaking currently is working on a web service using the EPA's uh, CDX and uh, WQX. And we list that this is a tool of both conveying data uh, through the federal network and also receiving data. Uh, so then we become a, a part of an even a larger network and it should uh, help uh, other users uh, obtain our data. And then we're also hoping to get data from that system. Um, other things is we will be working with grant recipients um, on including their data in SEDEN. Those would be groups that are doing and monitoring data with, with Prop 50. And what we're in the process now is working with regional boards and the grants manager um, here in uh, Sacramento in determining what our initial list of, of programs that we're going to include in that prioritization and whatnot. Um, let's see. Uh, activities are, are working with the RDCs and bringing more of their data to include more data in the system. And then another important part of the program is, is gaining uh, feedback from users uh, such as you and making further refinements as needed in order to make the system work better for everyone. So at this point, hopefully we can uh, take everyone off mute and answer questions. Thank you.